Hey guys, in this video we're going to talk about variables and arrays. Now, we talked about this in the first section in the PowerPoint, but we didn't actually get to do any kind of programming, so um, I'm hoping that this will give you a better understanding as to how variables and arrays work. So I'm going to create a new folder, and it's going to be called uh, Chapter 2, Section 2. And I'm going to create just one file, and that's going to be an HTML file, and I'm just going to call that index.html. So let's open that with the browser. Uh, obviously, we're not going to get anything. We haven't wrote anything yet. And let's open it with Notepad++. Now I'm going to paste in an HTML shell. So we have our doc type. HTML tags, head and body tags, we have a title, so let's save that, make sure that that's showing. You can see our title's changed. Now we can start adding some JavaScript. And this is the first video um, where we're actually going to type some JavaScript. So if you remember from the PowerPoint, to do that, we're going to open up some script tags. And what I'm going to do in this video, there's a, a lot of different ways you can do this, but I'm going to do all the logic in the head area, and then when we want to print out something, I'm going to do that in the body. So I'm also going to create script tags in the body. Now just because you type some JavaScript in here, uh, you can still access, let's say we, well, let's do it now, we'll create a variable, we'll say variable car is equal to Honda and you can use double quotes or single quotes when you define a string so we have this car which is equal to Honda now I want to print this out I want to print out the variable car in the browser to do that in JavaScript we want to use the document dot write function now what we can do here is we can use this function to to print out anything so let's say anything. Save that, and it's printing out the, the exact text we type in. But we don't have to just type in text. We can we can put a variable in here. So let's put our car variable in here, so we can have that printed out onto the screen. And you can see it printed out Honda. And if you remember uh, in the PowerPoint, I told you that you don't need that VAR keyword. We can save that. And that's still going to type out uh, Honda. Now we can change the variable as we go along, and it's always going to be the last declaration. So let's change this to Toyota. And if we save that, it's going to change to Toyota. All right. So that's strings. Let's do. Let's deal with some integers and do some simple arithmetic. So I'm going to say variable x is equal to five. Now, I'm not using quotes here because this is an integer. If we want an integer, which is a number, and we want to do arithmetic with it, then we don't want quotes because if we have quotes, that makes it a string. And you can't do arithmetic with strings. So let's also create another variable called y, and that'll be equal to 10, the integer 10. So I want to do this, I want to add these two together. So in my document.write function, I'm going to say x plus y. So we're going to write out x plus y. Save that, reload, and we get 15. Now if we, if we change these to strings, and we can do that by just adding quotes. Oh, sorry. So now we have the string, which is just the text 5, and the string, which is the text 10. We can save that, and still using x plus y, it's going to give us 510, because all it's doing is concatenating uh, the y variable onto the end of the x variable. Now, if you've never heard the word concatenating or concatenation, um, it just basically means to to tag them on to each other. So we can actually, we can mix ver um, sorry integers and strings. And I'm going to show you that right now. So in our document write, I'm going to 
create a string that says I have. Now I want to say I have five apples. All right, so that's easy enough. It's just going to print that out. Now, what if I want to use this variable here? I can't say I have x apples and expect it to turn into a five. It's just going to say I have x apples. What we need to do is concatenate, and we can do that with a plus sign. So we have to end this string. We're going to have two strings with an integer in the middle. So the first string is going to be I have, and the second string will be apples. Now, if we want to add this variable x into the middle, we have to use a plus sign and put x, x. I mean, I'm sorry, x with two plus signs. So that's just concatenating it on. Um, if I save this, it's going to say I have five apples. Now it's all crammed together. We actually need to put a space here. We can do that just by putting a space in the string areas of this statement. So that's how we would include a variable in a string. So that's pretty much the gist of variables. Uh, pretty easy to understand. Now I want to talk about arrays. So just like in the PowerPoint, I'm going to create a variable called cars, which is going to be equal to a new array. Now at the moment, cars is just an empty array. We can add values right in the declaration um, by just adding comma separated values. So let's say Honda, comma. Now we need quotes because these are strings. We'll say Toyota and we'll say Ford. All right, so now we have an array that has three values. And we can print out these values. Let's just get rid of this. Um, by using an index. So if we say cars zero brackets with zero, save that, it echoes out Honda. Now the reason it echoes out Honda is that it's the first value in this array. Now you might think that we should be putting one here, but like I said in the PowerPoint, arrays always start with zero. So this is zero, this is one, this is two and so on. Um, it's very important, very um, important thing to understand is that they start with zero. Now we can also add to this array by saying cars, let's see the next one would be three and we'll set that to dodge. So now down here if we say document dot write cars three we get dodge. Now I also want to mention that we don't need to use this syntax. We don't need to use the new array in parentheses. We could actually just use brackets and not even use the word array. So this will do the same thing. So if we save that and let's print out zero again, our first value, we get Honda. All right, let's see. I'm not going to go through for each loops. Um, which are used to go through the array values because we're going to do that in the loops video. Um, let's see. Oh, array properties. Now, arrays can have methods and properties as well. Um, for instance, the length property. Let's do this. Let's do document write cars dot length. Now, remember, an array is an object is an object, and objects can have properties. Now, to, to access those properties, we use the dot syntax, so cars.length. We're getting the length property of the cars object, which is an array. So let's do that, and we get four, because we have these three, and then we add in an extra one here, so it gives us four. Now, we can also use the property index of, so let's say cars index of and now we can put in a value, let's say Toyota. So what this is going to do is return the index number of the Toyota value. So let's save that and we get one because this is zero, Toyota is one. 
So that's pretty much all I can think of on the fundamentals and basics of arrays. Um, obviously we'll get more into this as the series goes on. Um, so the next thing we'll be talking about is loops.